Hello viewers, it is good to have you. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the 2023 general elections, Mr. Peter B, has lambasted and lashed out at the president, Tinubu, and the federal government for purchasing uh, a presidential jet. And also the revelation made by the House of Representatives about the millions of Naira they receive as running costs. Peter B made this statement at the National Democratic Institute Leaders Forum in the United States. Let's have a video. Very, very shameful. We shouldn't be talking about buying jets today with the level of poverty. We can be poverty capital of the world and be buying jets. It shouldn't be. Even when I'm still questioning, how much was the cost? We, we said we are replacing the old one. What is the age of the new one? Why did we need to replace the old one? What is it, if I wrong with it? For me, that shouldn't be. Every penny today should be directed about pulling people out of poverty, in health, in education. Because this is where we are lacking. These are development trajectories where we are lacking when compared with similar countries that we are supposed to be at par with. We are low in human development, in education. Our health is worsening every day. Where we have even taken India in infant mortality. That's why the fact that I that people are hungry. They don't know where the next meal will come from. So every penny should be directed to that. And that's what I hear everywhere. I've been speaking to people from other countries who are talking, listening to the Prime Minister of Kosovo speak this morning in a meeting, listening to former Minister, uh, Prime Minister of Denmark speak. Everybody is talking about the people, the people, the, and the ordinary people. And you could see what I'm telling you about the ordinary people. Mr. Peter B talked about the presidential jets as a shameful thing, a misplaced priority. We are talking about millions of people in Nigeria who are poor, and then the president is purchasing a new jet. So Peter B said that it's a misplaced priority, that every penny, every penny that the government makes should be invested into pulling people out of poverty. Now, Peter B also talked about uh, the democracy, of course, he went for the National Democratic Institute Leaders Forum. Every four years, the Institute invites international leaders across the world to discuss issues of democracy and good governance. So Peter B also talked about democracy. We all know that democracy is something that the new world, the civilized world, cherishes. Democracy is practiced differently across the world. The way we had democracy, the way the US practices democracy is different from the way Nigeria practices democracy. And democracy in the UK is also quite different from the way it is practiced in the United States and Nigeria. And even the democracy we had in the past was quite different from what we have now. Uh, we all know that Athens in the state of Greece was where democracy originated. But do you know that the way that Athens practiced their democracy was quite different? Because in the state of Athens, in ancient Greece, some certain individuals were excluded from the democratic process. The women, the uh, uh, metics, those we call metics, that is foreign residents, were not allowed. Only male, only adult male citizens in Greeks were allowed to vote. And these male constituted the smallest percentage in the state of Greece, about 15%. And democracy was practiced in, in, in Greek, in, in the state of Greece for 150, 150 years. And then in the United States, the way they practice democracy is quite different. Do you know that the president of the United States is not elected by the people directly? Those who elect the President of the United States, they are collectively known as the Electoral College. 
the Electoral College. So the people do not elect the president directly. Then in the UK, UK is also a democracy. But UK is also a monarchy in addition. And yet it's a democracy. Nigeria is also a democracy. But Nigeria is not a monarchy. In Nigeria, unlike in the United States, the people elect the president directly. So we have different versions of democracy around the world. We have different forms of democracy around the world. But the most important thing is that whatever form, whatever version that democracy is being practiced anywhere in the world, the most important thing is that it accumulates or it, it displays or it shows or it, it imbibes the very essence of that definition. What do I mean by that? That Abraham Lincoln said that democracy is the government of the people, by the people and for the people. So whatever form of democracy a country is practicing, the most important thing is that the people must be the end point. So that was why every four years, the National, the National Democratic Institute uh, in Chicago, in the United States, invites international leaders to discuss issues pertaining to democracy and good governance. Now, we also know that the United States, the National Democratic Convention of the National Democratic Party of the United States held, just uh, ended their four day long uh, national convention. It was just a ceremonial inaugural uh, program that officially nominated the president-elect and vice-president-elect, Kamala Harris and Tim Watts. Peter B. also talked about it, talked about the way the, the Joe Biden stepped down as he saw that as a sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice, using his words. It, it, for me, it was the ultimate sacrifice for people to, for him to say, I love my job, but I love the country more. So I have to step down so that somebody who is more energetic and younger can do it. That's all he, he described yesterday. And it, again, I'm so impressed with Hillary Clinton, who ran, was an aspirant alongside Obama, lost to Obama, was a candidate in 2016, and now coming back to support somebody who is younger, more energetic and everything, this is what we are not seeing in our country. And most importantly, all this convention and discussion have been about the people. This is what we're not doing in Nigeria. It's been about the people, the common people, the poor people, the average American. It is not about me and everything. And when you look at the people who are all involved, I was you know, listening and talking with the chair of DNC, Jamie Harrison, who is just somebody who was born in the 70s. And in Nigeria, back here in Nigeria, I remember when President, uh, former President Goodluck Jonathan, when he was defeated in the 2015 general elections, what he said, he said that his blood, his blood is not worth the, no, I, I mean his political ambition is not worth the blood of any Nigerian. So we can draw a parallel between Biden's quit and then President Jonathan's, but that is rare in a generic sense. What Biden did uh, is generally rare in Africa and in Nigeria, and it's quite shameful, very quite shameful. And so, remember that democracy also talks about unity. We all know that P2B in the presidential election of 2023, P2B was seen as a symbol of unity. He was able to draw people, individuals, groups across Nigeria, irrespective of race, irrespective of ethnicity, irrespective of tribe, religion, I mean. So he was a centripetal force. And that was why in the north, you, in the north that had a concentration of uh, Muslim communities, Peter B is an Igbo, and he's a Christian. 
but he had the huge support from the north. Now let me show you a video in Kano where a huge number of people came out to root for him. Let's have it. The message is very, very clear. Nigerians belong to you and I. It doesn't give any correlation to a Muslim or a Christian. As long as if you not do what is right for the people, then you have a vision with big question mark on you. The vision or mission of His Excellency is to unite Nigeria and to give the best of the best to the Nigerian people, irrespective of your tribe, your religion, or your creed, or where you come from. As long as you be fair to Nigerian, that is where His Excellency Peter Obi stands to. With all due regard, you cannot imagine today Nigerians are buying a bag of corn at 80,000 naira or even more than that. A bag of millet is costing about, about 90,000 naira. A bag of rice is costing about 80,000 naira. The cost of electricity has hiked. In fact, to worsen everything today, as of yesterday, the presidential jet of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has been hijacked. We Nigerians are in a state of hunger and dis despair. So what the message is that Nigerians leaders should think inwards and think of the people. That was quite interesting. That was quite interesting. Now, what question do you or can you raise from this? There is a question, a very important question. The National Democratic Institute that invited international leaders, it said invited international leaders to discuss issues pertaining on democracy and good governance. Now, my question is, why wasn't, if it was called national, uh, if, if those invited were international leaders, and in Nigeria, now, a few persons were invited, including Professor Yemi Osimbaje, the immediate past uh, vice president of Nigeria. Why was the president of Nigeria, the current president of Nigeria, not invited? Why was the FCT minister not invited? Why was other uh, prominent Nigerian politicians not invited? Peter B was invited. Well, viewers, I leave the answer. I leave the. I, I leave you to answer this question. It's just a rhetorical question. That's all I have for you today on the editorial thought. Join me next time. Thank you.